Hello, I thought I'd start doing weekly Hebrew. Uh, I was doing weekly Hebrew, and then I switched to Greek because um, the New Testament's important too. Uh, but uh, I've found, I think, that um, people on YouTube just really like Hebrew better than Greek. What's up with that? Um, so uh, I thought I'd do uh, maybe towards the end of the week, each week, uh, something from the Old Testament. I thought I'd start with the Ten Commandments. So. Here is, by most Protestant reckoning, the first commandment from Exodus 20, verse 3. By the way, I have um, Exodus, uh, is it 15 behind me? Uh, the, you can, you, this is a, um, a, a Torah scroll uh, that is actually at Indiana Western University is where this scroll is housed. But anyway, this is the Song of Moses um, from, I think, Exodus 15, if I remember correctly. It's usually in uh, Hebrew Torah scrolls uh, written in a, in a kind of, I forget what it's called, bridge uh, kind of format. That's not important right now. Let's do the first commandment. Lo is the word for not, and this is a accent. Notice that both the beginning, I think it's a saluk, uh, but it's uh, at the beginning and end of the verse kind of saying, this is a, a thing, this is a unit. Of course, those were not there when uh, Exodus was written. They're added in the Middle Ages, you know, 900s maybe. Okay, so not, uh, uh, yeah, uh, this is not the name of God. Uh, the name of God is not in this uh, commandment. Be interesting to see uh, whether the Ten Commandments consistently use Elohim. That's interesting. Uh, we'll see. Um, I've never, actually, I'm ashamed to say I've never read the Ten Commandments in Hebrew before. Uh, I've read all of Genesis in Hebrew, but I haven't read all of Exodus. But okay, maybe I should pick a book and go through it after we do the Ten Commandments. Uh, so, not will be, Yihya is third masculine singular from Haya, uh, which means to be. So, it will not be, or there will not be. Um, this is imperfect, uh, so you might translate it with a future tense, but of course, it has a, com it has a sense of command to it. You will clean up your clothes. You know, you will not have any other gods before me. Even though it's a future tense, it's really a command. Thou shalt not, as it were. Uh, Laka, to you. Uh, la is to, and ka is you. And it's a second masculine singular you, although I don't think this leaves women off the hook. I think it they, that women also are not supposed to have any other gods uh, before Yahweh. Okay, there will not be to you. It will not be to you. Elohim. This is fascinating. Um, actually, what I said earlier is a little pr prompted by a misread because Elohim here is not Elohim, right? Elohim here is um, is actual, a genuine plural, gods. It's not referring to the God. It's referring to uh, the gods of um, other peoples and so forth. You're not supposed to uh, worship Dagon or um, uh, Marduk or, or Zeus. Of course, Zeus, um, Zeus arguably didn't exist at this time. Uh, he, he might have in Greece. There might have been Zeus in Greece at this time. But um, probably, uh, I'm going to back, beep, 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 reversing. So, there will not be to you gods. Okay? A genuine plural. Hierarch Yod Mem uh, is a masculine plural absolute form. Okay? Gods. What is, what is therefore Curious grammatically is the fact that the Old Testament so consistently refers to the God, Yahweh, as an Elohim. Not Elohims, but Elohim. But here it's a genuine plural. There will not be gods to you. Um, akerim, other gods. So this is an adjective. The adjective typically comes after the noun. It, it modifies. So gods, other. There will not be other gods. All Panai. Um, so, upon, I think before works here, uh, panim is face. And so the, um, the uh, patak yod, uh, and I do think that that patak is slightly before the yod, nai, that, uh, that wouldn't make any sense. Panaya, panaya, that wouldn't make any sense. Panai. Okay, there's something strange going on here. And I'm not going to look it up because um, I've got to do other things with my life. But um, my, uh, my face is what's being said here. 
Um, and so the word panim, panayim, face, and then the yod is my face. All right? So uh, there will not be to you God, other gods before my face. Um, it is interesting. It doesn't, this seems to be, and, you know, we're just friends here, right? It seems to me that this is more an expression of henotheism than what we might call monotheism. It does not deny that there are other Elohim out there. It's simply saying, get them out of my face. <laughs> is, am I reading this right? Uh, that God is basically saying, I don't want to see any other Elohim in front of me, okay? You better not. Um, it's basically saying that Israel, the Israelites should not have any other gods anywhere. Israel, there should not be the worship of any other god anywhere in the land of Israel. Should not happen. I, I don't want to see any other gods in this Israel. Um, something like that. I don't want to see anything in this room, uh, you know, or whatever it might be. Um, now, here I should point out that angels, uh, you know, uh, you made, you made what is humanity that you are mindful of? You made them a little lower than the Elohim. Um, so uh, gods can be used in places uh, where angelic figures are uh, perhaps in view. My, the way I process this in biblical theology is Paul calls other gods demons. He, he, he likens eating at a pagan temple at eating from the table of demons. Why would you want to go to demon restaurant, Paul says. And so um, it's this gods here um, uh, doesn't, I mean, more precisely what we would say is you will have no other uh, spiritual being uh, before God's face. Um, you, uh, and, and, and it is talking about worship, isn't it? You will not worship anything else. God is the sole object of worship sometimes called monolatry. Well, um, this is Exodus 23, a very short verse, but a very important verse in both Jewish and Christian thinking. So next week, we'll move on to Exodus 24 uh, on Thursday or Friday, Lord willing.